I'm James from Smart Ass Paint. So many people have asked how I created these portraits that I thought I'd show you and explain why all that detail takes so long. Firstly, these are digital portraits, but I've used almost entirely traditional techniques in the same way as using pencil and paper. For me, the whole point is to improve my art and not to use software tricks. If you zoom right in, you can see all the individual pencil marks and detail. I paint these in very high resolution so they can be printed onto large canvases. This is my setup. I use a very basic digital tablet and two screens. One to view the subject and the other one is where I draw using Photoshop. I use a couple of pencils, erasers, charcoal and a little watercolour. So let's get into the art and look at Lily, the cockapoo. I had a few photos of Lily but I decided to go with this one and create a nice headshot. I'll crop the image to frame the face a little better and the first thing I do is create a diagonal grid across the photo. I'll do this on my canvas and this is a great way to check if the proportions are accurate as you draw. The next step is to get the important features exactly in the right place. Everything depends on the eyes, nose and mouth. I learned from this Da Vinci copy I drew that the slightest change in features gives you a completely different expression. I make a rough sketch and when I'm sure that's accurate I begin the actual drawing. In these initial stages, it can be difficult to see that you'll end up with a successful portrait. For me, if the eyes and the nose are accurate, you can see the character and move on to stage two. This is where I add major blocks of shading. I slowly build up the shading in a similar way to a painting. I remember that Lily was tricky because of her fur. It's difficult to see exactly what's going on, so I made a lighter version and a darker version so I could see certain parts better. I also searched for photos of other cockapoos on the internet to see how their fur differed. It's really important to understand what you're looking at, rather than copy what's in front of you. For fur, there's no real shortcut. You draw the large sections, shade it in, and then more and more detail of the hair. You don't need to draw each hair, but it still takes ages. So, we end up with our initial drawing, but the next stage is where we can really start to bring this to life. My favourite part is to add highlights with a white pencil. It adds so much in a subtle way, especially with fur. It really gives the portrait a feeling of depth and adds shine to metal objects. Lastly, I'll add the colour. The first stage is to add a subtle watercolour wash so that it doesn't cover the actual drawing. The next step is where I do use a technique that you can only do digitally. I paint underneath the drawing. This way I can create lots of depth and bold colour while still retaining the original drawing with all the white highlights. So here's the completed portrait. If you'd like to see more art, you can keep up to date on Facebook, Instagram and the website will be live very shortly.